what we're gonna do today is um, a bit of a progressive style balayage. Um, I've been finding uh, that, you know, a lot of times with balayage nowadays, it's like, yes, we still want that soft PC balayage look, but so many clients are more into what's happening around their face and not necessarily as concerned with, that, uh, with what's going on with the rest of their hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and use all of our different lighteners, our Blonde AF, our Clay Lightener, and our Cream Bleach, and I'm gonna show you uh, two different money piece techniques, and then how to incorporate those two money piece techniques together, and then also go through and show you a low impact balayage placement. Uh, it's gonna be some uh, cushioning, some feathering. I'm gonna use foils for most of it uh, because I'm a little bit old school and I definitely still like to use foils uh, when I am doing really any sort of like hand painting or balayaging, especially when we have a darker haired guest or obviously this mannequin is kind of dark. So, um, so all right, let's get to it. Do we have some people on there, Marco? Yeah, you have about yeah. 44 people. Cool. Okay guys, uh, my buddy Marco, he's one of our head videographers here at Pulp Riot. He's on the other side of the camera today. So he'll do his best to um, ask me questions if you guys do have any questions throughout the process. Uh, but yeah, so let's get started. First of all, let's come over here. We're gonna mix up some bleach. All right, so we got our Pulp Riot scale. I'm gonna start with Blonde AF around the face in foils because I do want a bit more impact. I want there to be some more brightness in these foils. That's grams, I like ounces better, so I'm gonna switch that. There we go. Um, I like my Blonde AF mixed about one to one and a half. I feel like that gives me the best consistency. Um, it, it definitely like, saturates through the hair really well, not too thick, not too thin. So one to one and a half for me is the magic number. I think I just mixed that one to two. So uh, uh, sorry about that. I'm gonna throw a little bit more powder in there. <laughs> All right, there we go. I like mixing with a whisk. I don't know about you guys, but I think that um, when I mix with a brush, I have a, a little bit of a harder time getting that nice creamy consistency in my lightener. So I tend to like to mix with a whisk a little bit better. You have several people that say they're excited to start using the products that I've never used them before. Oh, really? That's great. Yeah, as far as the lightness go, we have a few options. Uh, our Blonde AF is gonna be your classic uh, powder lightener. It's really good for lots of things. Um, I like it, I'd say, in foils, definitely. Um, I like it on scalp as well, depending on what level your client is or how sensitive their scalp is. Uh, then we have our Cream Bleach, which is our newest lightener that we created that is designed more for on-scalp lift. Um, it has oils and ingredients and things like that in it that are gonna give you uh, a little bit more of that gentle feel, that gentle lift. But I know some people out there that once they've now started using the cream bleach, um, that uh, they realize that it, it's, it is definitely strong and does get you, um, it has that power that you need to get the hair nice, nice and blonde. Okay, so a couple different money pieces, all right? so. This first money piece I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it here on the side. Now you wouldn't necessarily do a money piece here on the side, but some people do like that brightness around their face. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do back-to-back -back foils, separating out this top mohawk section. We'll get this out of our way here. Starting right here in the front, nice thin section. Obviously the mannequin hairline's a little different than a real person, but a section that you can pretty much see through. Get my Framar foil here. I personally like to use a board. This is a 
piece of trash cardboard. Um, there are lots of better ones out there, but I like my cardboard board. So there we go. Nice and tight. And this is gonna be a bolder money piece, right? So what you wanna do for this bolder one is you wanna get pretty close to where that foil is touching the scalp. Now you don't necessarily want to go all the way to the scalp yet, because we're gonna go back later and I'll show you an easy way to make sure you get consistent lift right there at the scalp. Okay, so nice heavy saturation. We're gonna fold this up. To bring that down there. Cool. Okay, so next section, we're just going back to back here. So I'm gonna take another thin section that I can see through. Let that drop. Now, a lot of people ask why I use the board, and for me, I just get better consistency in my saturation, I think, when I use a board. Um, on the next one, I won't use the board, and I'll show you where I sort of struggle not using it. I know there are a lot of people out there that don't use it, and they probably get great saturation, and that's what they're used to, but for me, the board was kind of how I learned how to highlight, so I've just been using it ever since then. Now I use 30 volume here. If this was a real person, I, I definitely wouldn't have started with 30 volume. Um, I'm only using it on the mannequin because I do want it to really lift. You guys, if you've worked with mannequins before, you know the hair just doesn't lift that well. Um, so I'm using a stronger lightener than I normally would. Another section, drop it down. We're just working with the angle of the face here. Okay, so this time I won't use the board. I'll show you, I guess, why I struggle. And maybe I'm just not doing it right, but. So there we go, get that in there right. Am I doing this right, everybody? I don't know, I feel like. So now I'm holding that on there. Yeah, so you know, if this is your style and you're more comfortable not using a board, obviously more power to you. Don't, don't use the board if you don't, if you don't want to. But see, even in here, when I'm sort of pushing that into my own hand, I don't feel like I'm getting the, the same saturation. And again, maybe that's just something that like I need to get better at, but I like, I like to use the board, so. Any questions so far? Anybody saying anything? Uh, no question. Cool. Angel Krause says hello. Hey, Angel. No judgment, I told you. And it's Marco here behind camera. He's like, hi, Jeremy or Marco. Is it? <laughs> Isn't that cool? That's one of my favorite things about Pulp Riot is that like, you know, our artists, they all get to know everyone that's here. That's part of the team. You know, we, we, we use videographers. We have um, our, our full marketing team. Everybody's in house, you know, so everything that you see that comes from the brand anything that's in salon centric publication or in state RDA, like any of that stuff, that's all, that's all made here in house. And our artists and our educators, when they come to shoot or anything like that, they get to know not just the other artists that are here, but they get to know the brand. You know, they, they, they know the people that are shooting the videos. They get to meet the marketing team. It's a, it's a pretty unique, uh, I think experience. And Marco's only been with us for a few months now, and people already already know who Marco is. Tamor's asking, she didn't hear when if you're asking the cream or the blonde AF. Yeah, uh, good ratio. good question. This is this is uh this is blonde AF, um, and like I was saying earlier, I like blonde AF in foils just because I think it gives me that sort of better, stronger, consistent lift. Uh, you could definitely use cream in foils, but for me. I like blonde AF and foils a little bit better. All right, so I'm getting close to where I'm just behind the ear. Now again, this is a mannequin. So I think, you know, this corner right here, you guys, like when you're working with a mannequin, 
it's really difficult to like deal with this this corner here. So let's pretend that you know this is a real person, not necessarily a mannequin. This is about where I would stop for this sort of bolder looking money piece. I have about four foils, five, maybe I'll do one more after this. And then I'm gonna go through and show you, show you how I get it super close to the root. Someone also asked, uh, what lightener would you use if the client wants like almost white hair and what toner? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, based on, you know, based on the strengths of our different lighteners, um, Blonde F is going to probably be the, the strongest. Um, and then there's all kinds of different ways to, you know, tone something to be platinum or to be white. Uh, we have, we, you know, you can do it with, with uh, Ghost Blood, which is our, our newest uh, semi-permanent uh, fashion shade. Um, it is a semi-permanent toner. Um, it sort of acts as something that's very similar to like a purple shampoo or a purple conditioner. Uh, so you get very heavy toning properties out of it, but you definitely need to get the hair lifted to a level nine, almost 10. Uh, because if you try to use ghost blood on something that's more like a level eight, you're not going to necessarily get the amount of toning that you need. Here is ghost blood, just came out a couple months ago. So, very cool technology. I'll show you guys what it looks like. So, it has that sort of very violet looking color. So, this is going to tone out a lot of yellow. But again, only at levels nine and 10. So if you can get somebody light enough, Ghost Blood's really great to use. Uh, we also have our liquid demis, 10-1, 10-2, 10-1-1. Any of those are great for creating platinum blondes. Uh, you could use anything out of the Interstellar collection, uh, which is our permanent, uh, part of our permanent line. 12-1, 12-1-1, 1 all of those would be great as well for canceling out a lot of warmth and creating that really nice light platinum blonde. Okay, I'm gonna do one more foil here. Would you use the board for highlight retouches? Definitely. I always use the board for highlights. Always, always. And again, I think it's because of how I learned how to highlight. Um, I started doing hair back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and the salon that I worked at, we used, um, we used these highlighting papers, and they came with a board inside the box. And so when I learned how to highlight with those papers, I learned how to use the board, you know? And the board's great. I really think it gives you this really nice platform to work off of. Uh, because you can start, you know, start here in the middle and saturate. Now you've got your tension on the hair. You can work your way up. And on this last one, I'm just going to feather a little bit off to give it some softness. Okay. So now that we have those all in there, Nice and clean. I think clean foiling is also super important. You know, the more clean and neat you can make your foils, the better your results gonna be. Now, that's just me. Again, I see some people just crumble some foils in there and mash it up and when they go and rinse it out at the end, it looks absolutely awesome. So, you know, again, totally up to you guys. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix a little cream bleach. There's a little trick, guys. If you can't get the rest of the cream bleach out, just push it like this against the corner of your counter. Get all that cream bleach there in the end. There you go, see? They say Doug is all about precision. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely getting all the cream bleach out. I'll cut this thing open too if I have to. Okay, so one part cream bleach. We're gonna stick with our 30 volume. We're gonna go one to one and a half 
with our cream again. It's just the consistency I tend to like. Let's not over mix this time though, Doug. 2.5, there we go. Someone asked about a ghost split again. If you just put that on, do you add anything like peroxide and does it? how does it compare to like Moonstone and Icy? Very good question. So um, Moonstone and Icy are the high speed toners, right? So those high speed toners, they're gonna actually oxidize and they're going to be a, um, you know, they're, they're gonna be a alkaline based color. So you're gonna get a little bit more power out of those, a little bit more lift even. Um, whereas Moonstone is just a semi-permanent color, okay? It fits in with all of our other semi-shades. So it's really just a conditioner-based toner. No developer, none of that stuff. Okay, so now we have our cream bleach mixed up. And what I'm going to do to really get this this money piece. Now remember, I'm just doing this money piece here on the side, but in most cases you would be doing this money piece here in the front, right? So I'm gonna start back here. I'm gonna lift my foils up. And then with my cream bleach, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna tap the base. Right there. Okay, now I'm doing this because again, remember our cream, our cream bleach is a little more gentle, right? Going to give us that same power or similar power to Blonde AF, but it's going to be a little more gentle on the scalp. So I'm going to make sure that I sort of just tap in here with my cream bleach. You don't want to oversaturate because if you do, sometimes the foils will end up sort of moving around a little bit too much. Drop that. There we go. And this also gives you the chance to, you know, anything that, you know, needs a little bit more lightener on it, that's right around that contact point, right? Where you put your foil in, you can make sure to like resaturate. So we're just dabbing that cream bleach in there. Now with a, with a real person, you know, the heat from the scalp and all those types of things are gonna affect um, what's happening with this, with these sort of, in between foils, which is good because you're gonna get a little bit extra lift. Now you might not necessarily do what I did and go right back in and put the cream bleach. You might wait a little bit longer based on how they're processing. But now we're right about up to those last two foils. So what I'll probably do is stop at this second to last foil because I'm gonna get that high impact right on her, right on her hairline, but I don't necessarily wanna keep pushing this all the way back into that last foil, because if I get start getting into here, that's where you can run into potentially bleeding into that other section. So I'm gonna stop right there at that last one, so I know that this one is gonna kind of protect the rest of this section from getting any more lightener on it. Okay, so that's gonna give you a very bold, high-powered money piece, okay? Now we'll move over here to this side and I'll show you guys how to do a slightly softer, more lived-in looking money piece. I kinda like these a little bit better, but I don't know, maybe that's just uh, my, my preference. Um, it's pretty simple. We're, we're obviously gonna be taking the same sections, back-to-back um, -back slices right around the face. And we're gonna use our foil to get in there, nice and tight. It's a little thick. If someone asked why do you put, not put the cream first and then foil? Is there a reason for that? Um, I guess uh, I could put the cream first and then foil, but I think that if I put the cream first, I might end up getting a little messy. I think if I, if I put the cream in there, then I'd be kind of trying to work through my sections and I'd probably pull the cream somewhere I didn't want it, you know? So I like to just be super precise with the foils first. Okay, so this one, 
simply feather up into that root area, okay? Sorry. So we're gonna saturate from the mids to the ends down. And then as we get closer to the scalp, we're gonna feather up. So all this is doing is creating slight diffusion right there at that hairline. I'm gonna switch this foil because I don't like the way that one's sitting in my head. So like, this is a good example. Like, don't be afraid to fix a foil, right? Sometimes, sometimes you put a foil in there and it does something you don't want it to do. Like, don't be afraid to get back in there and fix that foil. There we go, now we got it turn. They keep um, touching back on the cream bleach. Why was it used on the roots? Is it because uh, it's milder? Exactly, yeah. I put the cream bleach there on the roots because it's it's designed for lifting on scalp. So there are more ingredients in it to help protect the hair. There's oils, things like that, so that it's not as um, intense on the scalp. Now, you can definitely use Blonde AF on, on, on the scalp. That's That's fine as well. Uh, but the cream bleach just gives you that softer, softer, gentler lift. You guys find you're still getting people coming and asking for money pieces? Is there a lot of a lot of that still? So I feel like there is. Getting yeses. Yes. On the money pieces. Lots of money pieces. Yeah, and there's so many different ways to do this, guys. I'm just showing you the ways that I think that I've been successful. I mean, you could definitely just section out your front money piece area and bleach it out without the foils. You know, you can, you don't even, you don't even need them. Um, but I find that I just get more even lift, better consistency when I sort of put things in in foils. So here, come, come get a little closer there. So. So even with this one, like my saturation's okay, but I do want a little bit more. So I'll just open that up and I'll hit this a little bit, a little bit more. So don't be afraid to get back into your foils and add more bleach and do things like that because sometimes, you know, I mean, especially with the mannequin, it's hard to get the consistency. It's hard to get that full saturation. How many levels does this bleach lift? Uh, this one is up to nine levels. Up to nine levels. Um, our clay lightener is up to seven levels, which is pretty awesome. Um, and our cream bleach is also up to nine levels. <laughs> Caitlin Kennedy's in the house saying the music is fire. <laughs> There you go, Doug. <laughs> Good choice. Can you use the cream bleach for the foils? Um, you can use the cream bleach in the foils. Um, I think that the cream bleach has a, ten has, has a tendency to in foils probably swell a little too much. So if it were me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose to use cream bleach in, in foils. 
it's a little bit better for more open air or just on scalp. Okay, so this will be the last one I do here. You guys get the idea with this one, right? Pretty simple. It's the same thing, just back-to-back -back foils, but you're just giving it a softer feel right there at the root. Um, this is gonna save you from any sort of bleed marks. It's gonna save you from that super harsh looking um, grow out with the money piece. Um, you know, I mean, some people like that, but if they just want something that's a little softer around their face, then this is the way to go. There we go, just feathering soft, making sure that we get our full saturation through the mids and ends. And again, when I'm doing this folding and bringing these sections up, I'm always kind of opening up here and checking and just seeing if I need to detail anything a little bit more, add a little bit more light now. Okay. All right, so now we have our bold money piece on one side. We have our soft money piece here on this side. We're gonna let this drop. And now here in the front, I'm going to do a combination of the two. And what that's gonna do is it's going to give you a money piece that's almost shaped like a triangle, right? It's gonna be heavier here across the front and then it's gonna gradually blend into something a little bit softer, okay? Is cream bleach good on level one to three hair on the scalp to achieve at least a six? Definitely. Yeah, great question. To achieve at least a six for sure. How many foils do you recommend for a softer look? For a softer look in, in the money piece area? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, for, like four to six, I think is, is, is plenty for a softer sort of looking money piece. But it depends on the density too, right? If their hair is pretty fine, then you could get away with less. If their hair is pretty coarse, then you probably need to do a little bit more. Okay, so this one we're gonna get nice and close, like we said earlier, not all the way there yet, but close to the scalp. What's the highest developer you can use with the cream bleach? Um, I mean, that's a, I've used it with 40 volume. Not a lot of people do that, but like when I bleach myself out, um, I use 40. Uh, I think a lot of times with me, it depends on what you're bleaching, right? I'm naturally like a level six, seven. So cream bleach with 40 volume on me for about 30 minutes, I can get my hair very light, right? Uh, but if I were to try to say, do a retouch on myself, right? If I wanted to get in there and bleach my roots, I probably wouldn't use 40 volume because the 40 volume is gonna expand, it's gonna get onto the hair that's already bleached and then I'm gonna run into all kinds of problems. So. If it's virgin and you don't have to worry about overlapping anything, as far as I'm concerned, you could use up to 40 volume. Now, most people don't. Uh, 20 volume with cream bleach is, is, very, um, is very good. You can get the hair super light with 20 volume. How about out there? Anybody else using more than 20 volume with their cream bleach? Or just me? Any of my friends still on there? Caitlin, Angel, what are you guys using with your cream bleach? Oh, they're all gone. Caitlin just said you can always weave through foil sections for a softer look too. Yeah. 
And someone asked about the using cream bleach, do they all swell? Like, is that something across brands or they said, do they all swell? Um, I don't think that all cream bleach is swell. I think uh, there are things that create swelling in any sort of lightener. Like if there's, if there's any sort of heat happening on the scalp, um, it can always, you can always run into some swelling. Um, I, our cream bleach doesn't swell much. Um, I think the saturation is great. Uh, the accuracy is really good as well. If you have somebody with pretty short roots, um, you know, like that four to six week uh, root touch up, the cream bleach is great because again, it's like super gentle. You get nice high lift with just 20 volume. Um, so, uh, you know, I, 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 think, uh, I think our cream is really great. Yeah, they're saying Caitlin's go-to is 30. Um, she uses 40 with great results. Someone else said they use 40 on themselves as well. So, mm -hmm. right on. Yeah, I think it's funny when it comes to hairdressers where we're like, oh yeah, sure, we use 40 on our own scalps. <laughs> like, cause we know, you know, you just, we just kind of know what to expect. And a lot of times with guests, you know, 40 volume on them can be a little bit, a little bit too much. But, um, you know, I don't know, not for, not for me. Someone asked, what about hair texture and density factor when with the developer levels? Um, hair texture and density factor? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if their hair's like more coarse, more dense, uh, in most cases it's going to be more dark probably. Uh, so you would probably need to up your developer levels based on you know how thick and coarse and dark their hair is. Um, if their hair is finer, thinner, lighter, any of those things, then obviously you would want to go a little lower with your, um, with your developer. Okay, so for these first four foils, maybe, maybe I'm going to do five. Again, I'm going pretty tight to the scalp with my first application of lightener. Amber Moyer says, hey, friend. Hey, what's up, Amber Moyer? How are her cats doing? Hairless cats, right, Amber? Is that, am I right on that one? I'm all right. Hairless cats? Did she say yes yet? Yeah, I'm still waiting. To... <laughs> I swear, I think I woke up in like a hotel lobby one day. My flight got in the middle of the night. And I'm pretty sure it was Amber Moyer. She was picking up a hairless cat in the lobby of the hotel that I was in. <laughs> she said, yes, amazing. Yep. Yes. amazing. Yes. <laughs> right, Amber? I was like asleep on a chair in the, on the other side of the room. And I woke up and there you were with your hairless cat. <laughs> so random. Man, I miss all of you, all of you guys. These past few weeks, I've had the opportunity to go to a couple of the uh, Pulp Ride is My Jam events. I was at one in Kansas City this past weekend. We had over 200 people there. It was absolutely awesome. Um, Angel was there, uh, Courtney Gans, and um, Julie Jordan, and they all absolutely crushed it. The education was fantastic. Um, and I did one in Baltimore a couple weeks before that. So. You guys check out the Salon Centric website or uh, just go on the Pulp Riot page and the schedule for all of the Pulp Riot is my jams is going to be on there. Um, they're really fun events. Um, we have two to three educators based on, you know, how many, how many uh, people are coming to the shows and, uh, and it's just fun. It's like a good couple hours of solid education with some Q&A. And it's just a great, you know, great way to connect and hang out again. Just, you know, we all haven't seen each other in so long. So, um, so yeah, look and see if there's one in your area. Um, I'm trying to go to as many of them as I can because they are a lot of fun. 
Okay, so now that I've done those first five or so tight, I'm gonna use our second technique that we used over here, and I'm gonna sort of start to feather off instead of going quite so close. So this is just going to gradually give us a softer money piece look where it's very heavy and close right around the hairline, but as it moves off the hairline, it starts to soften up. And even just like Caitlin said, you could potentially throw a couple weaves in here at the end of this to soften it up even more. Someone asked that they do a weave and then slices to start and why choose the technique of slice from the beginning? Yeah, sure, great question. So if you start with the weave, it's just gonna automatically start a little softer. Um, but this, what I'm trying to show here is just more of a, a, bold, a bold money piece that's bright and right on the hairline, nice and heavy. But yeah, you could definitely weave that first piece on the money piece for sure. It's really just kind of up to what your you know finished look is or what what you want to create right if you want it to be softer then yeah you could just do a bunch of back-to-back -back weaves it's going to give you a really softened looking money piece which is totally fine as well so it's just kind of up to what your end result is and at the end of this after i get through the sort of balayage sectioning i'll show you guys what the finished look of these three different money pieces uh, look like. I have a mannequin over here that's hiding in the oven. I was telling Marco that I was going to show this later. He said, oh, it's like a cooking show. <laughs> I said, yeah, exactly. Okay, so what we did over here, we have our, our heavy money piece. We went in, we tapped the roots with our, with our cream bleach. Over here, we have our softer, more feathered money piece that's off the scalp very very soft and, and feathered and now what we're going to do here is a combination of the two so this one's soft and feathered soft and feathered soft and now right around here i'm going to start going in with my cream bleach and i'm going to tap the root and so this is going to give me that bold money piece look in the front, but as it works its way back off of the head or off of the scalp, it's gonna have a softer feel. And then I think Angel Cross was at the educational event in Kansas. She said, read this to Doug and quote, coming in your Kansas city. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were definitely uh, having a good time in Kansas City. All right, so that last one, there we go. Cream bleach right on the scalp. So now we have the power of Blonde AF, right, in the foil. We got the cream bleach on the scalp. And now I'm gonna mix up some clay lightener and I'm gonna show you a sort of low impact balayage sectioning. Cool? How are we doing so far? Any questions out there? Cool. I know it's time, 12.40, oh wow, we are, we are rolling. Okay, I'm probably only gonna get through about half of this balayage technique because that took me longer than I thought it was going to. All right, clay lightener. The artists are just having withdrawals. They're like, I miss working in that room so bad. <laughs> Angel, Caitlin, as well. Okay, now with my clay, I actually like it a little bit thinner. So I mix my clay one to two. Tried to be cool with that cap and I just wasn't. Not cool. Textbook for school. Yeah, I don't know how delayed.
in the comments up if you like sick developer moves, Doug. <laughs> All right, the the clay line is a little a little lighter, almost like uh, weight wise. So when I do mix up the clay, I, I I try to take my time a little bit and make sure that I don't make a full mess all over the counter with it. You can definitely use the clay in foils. I'm 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 about to use it in foils. Um, just so you guys know, it, it, it's it's great open air. It does have an ingredient in it called kaolin, um, and it's a uh, it's it's the ingredient that that creates that sort of harder shell on the outside, but still keeps it moist on the inside. It's called kaolin clay. A lot of people like to mix the lighteners as well, so if you do want to uh, throw a little Blonde AF into your clay, there's nothing wrong with that. Feel free. It'll give you a little bit more power, you know? Um, I tend to kind of like the clay by itself just because uh, I think all three of our lighteners do things differently and they do the different things really well. Uh, so for me, I like to use them accordingly. Um, I will mix some uh, Blonde AF <laughs> in with my clay every once in a while, uh, but it just depends on you know how much how much lift I'm really looking for. Okay, so I'll start by sectioning this kind of down the middle again. Not again, that's for the first time I'm sectioning it down the middle. I get stuck in haircut talk. That's all we do is section it down the middle over and over again. Is it just me or can you like never get the middle of the mannequin? I think it's probably just me. Oh, maybe it's okay. Okay, so like I said, this is gonna be a slightly more low impact balayage feel, but I think that when we do have these bolder money pieces and people wanting more stuff around their face, it's good to add some sort of dimension, some sort of balayage into the rest of the hair just to give it a more complete look. So we're gonna start here at the nape, take a diagonal back section, let that drop. Get this out of your way. And I'm gonna take this section, split that again, let that come out. We do one tease, that's it. I find that if I tease too much, uh, I have a really hard time getting the tease out at the shampoo bowl. So I kind of just go for just one, one soft push. That's it. And then with my clay, I'm going to start here in the middle, make sure I saturate my mids and my ends pretty heavily. And then just feather up from there. So like I said, guys, this is pretty low impact. This is just gonna give us almost a more of a grown out balayage look with that intense sort of brightness around the face. So another diagonal back, about a quarter inch above that one. Let that drop. We'll resection there. One push. Uh, I personally don't do a ton of balayage, but when I do, I do kind of like to keep it a bit more on the low maintenance side. Like I want it to be able to last for a really long time. So by not doing anything like too heavy, too close to the scalp, it gives me that always sort of lived in feel. And for me and the, anyone that I do balayage on, um, it just gives them that, it just kind of makes it a little easier for them. Okay, 
one more here. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to get kind of up to the ear. So once I get up to the ear, I'll do one more. And again, if they have more hair and you want more highs and lows or more brightness, then you would definitely just do more of these sections with less space in between. One push. Saturate here and feather up. Okay, so there we go. Now we're right here around the ear. And again, if you wanted to do more, you could go back in, you could you could weave you know, if you wanted to add more to this, you could pick this section up. You could weave something in here. You know, give that a push. So you could add a lot more depth. You could do even more with it. But again, we're talking sort of low maintenance, low impact balayage here. All right, so now that we are meeting that point where our front area is done and we've come up behind the ear, I'm gonna take sort of a large section diagonal back from the front. And we're gonna connect that front area into the back area. Around how thick are you doing your sections? These are about um, less than a quarter inch. I mean, I can pretty much see through it, especially once I, once I push the hair that's actually getting lightener on it. You can see through it as I put the foil on. As I put that foil on there, see how you can see through all of it. You can see the foil all through there. off of that we're gonna go again a little a little higher so now we've almost you know we kind of worked those three up the back and now we're really starting to work into the sides and the top because I think so much of the time with balayaging we've concentrated so much back in here underneath and in so many cases that's the stuff that nobody sees right that's where you should really I think leave some darkness, leave some lows in there so that the highs from around the top and underneath can really make this stuff pop, right? So that's what I, I like to do. I kind of start in the back and I work my way up through the front and then from here, we're gonna just keep working all the way through that middle part, okay? Taking again, diagonal back sections, giving them a push. And again, we're using the, the clay lightener here because it's giving me a slightly softer feel. I love the consistency of it. And when I go to feather up into that teased area, it's just very soft. I'm not getting any flaking or anything like that. You know, everything's very soft.
think I need a new board. I think this, <laughs> I think this one's not the best. Do any of you use that board that has that has the teeth on the end of it to like push the T's in there? I keep seeing that one and I haven't tried it yet. I don't even know who makes it. Probably Framar. They make everything. Okay, so we're still working with this, this half. You guys see how much hair I have left here, right? So this is still the other half. Someone said yes to the Koo board. That is great. What's it called? Koo board. C-O-O. Okay. I know a lot of people just want to know. They love it. Sounds cool. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so still working towards the top here. I want to make sure that I'm letting this area through here be my slightly more negative space. And this is now almost up off of the part that I'm working. Cool board. Okay. Gotta get one. My next live I'll have one. Okay, so let's say you did wanna do a little bit more through this top area. So you did wanna add a little more. You could go right off that last one. That last one we sliced, right? So this next one here, right off of the slice, we could throw a weave in there. Just a quick one. Give that a little push also, just to make sure that that line is slightly dissolved, you know? I mean, granted, we can always go back in and tone things out, but that little push, I think, really, really helps. You can get a little closer with this one, right? Because it's just that little weave. So this is just gonna give you a little bit more, a little bit more brightness. And you could alternate back to back. You know, you could push the slice, then push the weave, give you a little bit more brightness through the top. But again, concentrating on leaving some of this out back through there to give you the depth and let the stuff that you do that's a little brighter that sits on top of the head and falls through to really sort of shine and, and, and pop. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, all right, cool. So you just would keep going from there, right? Keep taking those slices through the top into the back, but not necessarily dropping down into this area, right? We wanna leave some of that out so that this hair that's balayage can sit on top of it and give you those highs and lows, okay? So pretty easy balayaging technique. You could add more foils if you want. You could do it with even less foils, you know, it just, depends on really what sort of end result you're going for, right? Okay, and then as for our money pieces again, let's just let's just revisit these. 
So on this side, we went back to back foils. We applied the lightener pretty close to the scalp as we went through and then through our last four or five that got closer to the scalp, we applied our cream bleach. And you guys can see how well already that cream bleach is lifting in there, right? So that's gonna give you that really nice pop and close lift right there at the scalp. The cream bleach is awesome, right? Look at that. Cool. And then through this side, everything was softer and feathered. No cream bleach in there. Granted, mannequins, so, you know, that's just what we're working with. But you can see how that's going to give you a more diffused finish. Yeah. And then through this front money piece, we went closer. Cream bleach around the scalp through the first three, four foils. And then we slowly started to diffuse off of the scalp with our foils to give us a softer or blended look. Still really bright right around the front, but it's gonna diffuse as it works its way through the back. Cool, any questions? We're good. All right, so here is our finished look. Now I use the same techniques on this mannequin here. Okay, so as you can see, I think I switched the sides, but this is going to be our bold side money piece, right? So that's right there on the scalp, very heavy. The whole piece there is all blonde. And as we work through the back of that piece, if I split it here, you can see that it's to the scalp all the way through, okay? So that's your, that's your bold back-to-back -back money piece with your clay lightener on the scalp. Okay, and then over here, we have our more diffused money piece, right? This one is all sort of softer and feathered there. No cream bleach at the scalp. This is our soft feathered looking money piece. Um, to me, I really like this look. Um, I think it grows out a little bit nicer. I think it lasts a little bit longer. Um, that's just kind of like more my, my style, my jam. Um, very pretty but whatever. Um, and then here through the top, we have the combination of both, right? So we have our bold money piece here at the scalp, but then as you can see, as we work our way off, it gets softer and more diffused through here, okay? So that's just a really nice way to be able to create that money piece that sits bright right on the front of the head, but then as it works its way off, it's a little bit softer and more diffused. Um, so you don't have just one big harsh line. And then slightly some of those balayage pieces are in there. Um, this mannequin's hair was a little darker, a little longer, but you can see through here, it's just kind of like sun-kissed, um, just that softer sort of feel. But I think it works really well with that blended money piece. So you have the nice bright stuff through the front and then the real soft sort of lived in balayage pieces throughout the back so so there you go um, yeah uh, I hope that these three different or, or a few different techniques on how to create these different money pieces and then that balayage pattern you know just remembering to keep some depth through here um, you know even if you go brighter on the top let that darkness that's underneath in the occipital area kind of let it be let it breathe so that some of that brightness that you put throughout the rest of the hair can really stand out and and pop. So, so there you go, we have Blonde AF, we had uh, Cream Bleach, we had our uh, Clay Lightener, all three, you can use them all different ways, you can mix them all together. Um, very versatile line of lighteners. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys got something out of this today. I appreciate it, I had fun. Um, always like doing these things. Any more questions or anything before we jump off um, a lot of props uh, Taylor asked if you could lift the back up one more time to see under the depth yeah so it's all dark under here all dark but you can see some of that brightness throughout some of the ends so that big money piece in the front leaving that darkness there in the back really lets all the bright hair pop throughout